Hello, good evening. Welcome to Beyond the Headline. I'm Shreya Upadhyay. The Israel-Hamas war is continuing and on Mirror Now, we are getting you the latest on that. But on Mirror Now, we are also getting you voices from both sides, from the side of Israel as well as the side of Palestine. And tonight on the show, I'm joined by two such voices. First, I'm joined by a voice from Israel. And later on the show, I'll be joined from a voice from Palestine. First of all, let me welcome on the show Lieutenant Colonel Dr. Mordechai Kedair. He served in the IDF military intelligence for 25 years. And on the show tonight, he joins us to talk about the war between Israel and Hamas. Dr. Kedar, uh, thank you very much for speaking with Mirror now. First of all, help us understand the latest situation in the war. Well, Israel is waiting on the borders of uh, the Gaza Strip, ready to go into this Gaza Strip and to do the job to get rid of this uh, ISIS-like group named Hamas, uh, which uh, has no other choice but to be eradicated. Okay, Dr. Kedar, uh, the American president, Joe Biden, has made a statement that one of the major reasons for Hamas's attack on Israel uh, could be to derail the peace in the region and to derail the India-Europe Middle East economic corridor, which was announced recently. What do you make of that? It is very possible, yes, because they don't want any peace in this region uh, unless this peace includes them and takes them in, in account. Uh, yet, uh, the other countries like Saudi Arabia and the Emirates, and uh, of course, the United States, don't care so much about them because they are, they are a terrorist group. So they want to impose themselves on everybody by hitting Israel. You also said, Dr. Kedar, that uh, Israel is planning to eradicate Hamas. How does your country plan to do that? Just like the, how the civilized world dealt with ISIS, just like how the civilized world dealt with Al-Qaeda in Afghanistan. And uh, yes, this is the way how the civilized world should deal with such uh, terrorist groups, which you guys in Mumbai suffered so much from. The same thing. Dr. Kedar, you know, um, there is also a humanitarian crisis in Gaza that has erupted out of the Israel-Hamas attack, about, uh, out of the Israel-Hamas war. Uh, what would you like to say to people who are saying that the Palestinian cause, the people in Gaza, uh, are also suffering as much as the Israelis are and they should be talked about too? First of all, Hamas was chosen democratically by the majority of the Palestinian people uh, in the of the last election, which were, took place in 2006. Secondly, many of the Gazans took part in looting and raping uh, on the October 7th in Israel. Many of them uh, came to the Israeli set, uh, places and communities and did what they did and, uh, you know, raped and, and killed and looted and everything. Thirdly, when they heard the Hamas victory means the success on the 7th of October in the morning, they bursted out to the streets in order to, distri to distribute yeah, sweets and, and to celebrate the big uh, uh, success, as they consider it, of Hamas. So... This is uh, the, the, the population of Gaza. Um, how, however, uh, these people were taken hostages or human shields by Hamas. We evacuated all the civilians from that part of, of, of Israel and in the north as well, in order not to be uh, harmed by a war. But Hamas, unfortunately, does not let them flee away from the place because they want them to be their human shields. And this okay. is something which even permitted by international law to fight against those, those killers because even if they hide be behind hostages, 
it doesn't mean that the force which wants to hit them cannot work. Dr. Kedar, there have also been talks of a ceasefire so that humanitarian aid can reach and the war can pause for some time. Uh, what about that? What about a substantial ceasefire that does see results and helps people on both sides? The question is right. And we are definitely uh, want to, to operate on the unit, humanitarian basis as well. But this should start with the most humanitarian action of releasing the over 200 Israeli hostages in the hands of this ISIS-like uh, group. When this start or when this ends, everything will be possible. Okay, let me ask my last question to you, Dr. Kedar. Uh, India has uh, voiced its support for Israel in this war. Uh, we've condemned the terrorism and the terror act carried out by the Hamas group. How do you see India's support to Israel? India, like the rest of the civilized world, should condemn what Hamas did to our civilians and should stand behind Israel in this struggle between good and evil, between civilization and savagery uh, which we are in. This cannot continue because these people, if they are people at all, they should be eradicated because they harm their own people before they harm the others. And this is the problem, whether it's from Pakistan or from wherever they come, they should be treated lightly. All right, Dr. Mordechai Kedar, uh, thank you very much. Appreciate you talking to Mirror now and sharing your perspective. Hopefully, the war will end soon. Thank you very much, Dr. Kedar, for speaking with Mirror now. All right, uh, with that, let's also welcome our next guest on Beyond the Headline tonight. Uh, this is the voice from the other side of the conflict. This is a voice from Palestine that we are talking to. Mr. Mustafa Barghouti joins us on the show tonight. He is a member of the Palestinian Legislative Council. He's also the General Secretary of the Palestinian National Initiative. Uh, Mr. Barghouti, thank you very much for speaking with Birar now. Appreciate you talking with us and joining us tonight. First of all, help us understand the ground situation right now in the war. The ground situation in Gaza and the West Bank is very difficult and very dangerous because what we live in now is continuous Israeli bombardment that is unprecedented. Uh, they have already destroyed 45% of all homes in Gaza and uh, already something like 7,000 Palestinians have been killed by these Israeli airstrikes on Gaza including no less than 2950 children in addition i mean this is this is uh, an attack that is uh, only be can be considered as an act of genocide against civilian population of gaza and in addition the collective punishment continues by depriving gaza from water electricity fuel and medicines the biggest emergency program now, problem now is that uh, seven hospitals have stopped working because of lack of fuel and no electricity and uh, this can happen now in the rest of the of the palestinian hospitals we have no less than 120 babies who are in incubators who could die at any moment because of lack of electricity we have more than 1,100 people who are in need for kidney dialysis, including 32 children who could die because there is no access to fuel and electricity. Uh, we have so many patients with cancer who cannot get their treatment, patients with diabetes who don't have insulin, and uh, uh, so many other problems, including the fact that Israel has destroyed so many health facilities, including uh, one of the centers that we run there, which is specialized in providing rehabilitation for people with disability. There is shortage of food, shortage of water, shortage of everything. And uh, it's a total humanitarian disaster because Israel continues the ethnic cleansing of the north and center of south of Gaza. 
Mr. Bhargati, um, you know, America has talked about a ceasefire, a corridor uh, that it wants to support, to, uh, to dole out and to help uh, reach the Palestinians as well as the Israelis, the Palestinians in the Gaza Strip. Uh, what do you make of this? What do you think of this American-supported corridor? It's not true. Uh, what the what the America has allowed so far is no more than uh, 70 trucks, while uh, Gaza daily need is 500 trucks of supplies, of food, of water, of electricity, of fuel. And uh, because Gaza did not have any trucks getting in for more than 20 days, uh, we are talking now about an emergent, an urgent need for 1,000 trucks. So 70 trucks out of 1,000 uh, is only a drop in the ocean. But more than that, none of these trucks were allowed to carry uh, uh, fuel. And that is the main problem today in Gaza. And uh, none of these trucks were allowed to carry oxygen uh, cylinders for patients in the hospital. So the, the, the only truck that had oxygen cylinders in it was turned back. And uh, that's why there is shortage of everything, including oxygen in the hospitals. So the, what, what they have provided is nothing but very little support in comparison to the needs that are there. Mr. Bargothi, uh, the American president has made a statement on the the reason for this Mr. attack by Biden. Hamas, and I asked this to my Israeli guest as well, uh, you know, uh, he has said that uh, one of the reasons of this attack was to derail the peace and stability that was coming in the region, uh, and the fact that uh, Hamas wanted to derail the India-Europe-Middle East economic corridor. What do you think of it? Do you resonate with this? Mr. Biden is buying Israeli propaganda all the time. I think this president uh, has caused very big damage to the presidency in the United States because he's hurting his reputation and the reputation of the Ameri United States of America by repeating lies without even verifying them and by adopting completely the Israeli version. I'll give you examples. He followed what Netanyahu said about decapitation of children. CNN uh, correspondent had to apologize for mentioning that because it couldn't be verified and it proved to be incorrect. He spoke about women being raped. Los Angeles Times came out with their correspondent apologizing for reporting that, which when, when verified, what tend to be incorrect. He spoke, he agreed with Netanyahu that uh, a rocket, a Palestinian rocket attacked the hospital, the Baptist hospital in Gaza. And uh, then even New York Times is now reporting that the Israeli version, the Israeli story, the videos that they used are very, are highly suspicious. And he also bought the Israeli propaganda that Palestinians are taken, the civilian Palestinians are taken as field, at shield, at, uh, as shields for, by Hamas. Again, this was proven to be incorrect and not right. So he keeps talking, he's trying to blame Palestinians all the time instead of forcing his ally, which is Israel, to stop this aggression. And we do not understand why the president of the United States and the prime minister of Britain are so adamantly against the ceasefire. Can I also ask you, uh, Mr. Bargothi, that, uh, you know, the world woke up to this attack, this war between Israel and Hamas. We saw tragedies on both sides. We are still seeing them every day. Uh, but, uh, you know, what does the average Palestinian, uh, what do Palestinians like yourselves and others think of the Hamas group? Hamas is part of the, of the, of the Palestinian uh, structure, political structure. But Hamas does not have majority. And uh, one of uh, the problems we had was that we did not have elections since 2006 because the PA, the Palestinian Authority, kept post postponing them. And uh, in 2021, we had a very good chance of having these elections. 
uh, and uh, unfortunately, United States and Israel blocked them. And uh, they, they pressured the Palestinian Authority to cancel them. Uh, had we have elections, we would not, uh, all polls would have uh, show that we would not have uh, any party, including Hamas or Fatah, having absolute majority. We would have had a pluralistic democratic system. No party would be running uh, a one-party rule, neither in Gaza or West Bank. But unfortunately, the most the country that claims to be the greatest democracy in the world, the United States, was against our free democratic elections, as well as Israel, which did everything to block elections by preventing them from taking place in Jerusalem. Uh, this is the reality. And so Hamas is part of the structure. It's not all the structure. And uh, there is a lot of process of dehumanization of Hamas. Of course, we don't agree with killing any civilian, that's for sure, whether Palestinian or Israeli. But uh, what you see in the world media is all this attention to Israeli suffering and very little attention to Palestinians. So you're saying, Mr. Bargothi, like uh, that the world over, whatever we saw during the war and the world condemned the terrorism and the terror attack carried out by the Hamas group, uh, that Palestinians like yourselves do not consider Hamas a terror group? Well, at this moment, I don't see except one attack, the Israeli attack on Palestinians. And what Mr. Guterres said in the United Nations was very clear. He said that Hamas attack on Israel did not come from a vacuum. He said that Palestinians have been under Israeli brutal military occupation for 56 years. And we have been under brutal ethnic cleansing uh, since 75 years by Israeli uh, establishment. 70% of the people of Gaza are refugees who were displaced from their homes 75 years ago by Israel through an act of ethnic cleansing. And because Guterres mentioned that, although he condemned the attack on Israelis, he was immediately witch-hunted by Israeli media, who now demands that he should resign, only because he, he spoke about what the cause of the problem. As a medical doctor, I know you could kill the patient if you talk only about the symptoms. The 7th of October was a symptom of a disease, and the disease is occupation and apartheid that Israel is practicing against Palestinian people. And, and, and now the witch hunting is going on. The Israeli foreign minister came out saying, and you as a journalist would agree with me that any, any person who is not part of this situation should be balanced. The Israeli foreign minister, Mr. Cohen, came out in the United Nations saying that from now on, nobody is allowed to be balanced. Either you are with us or you are against us. How could he say such a thing? This to me sounds like fascist propaganda. Okay, let me ask my last question to you, Mr. Bargothi. What would you say to the world uh, on the fact that Palestinian suffering, that uh, the voices of the Palestinians, as has been said, are not talked about or are not discussed on global platforms as much as Israeli sufferings have during this attack? Look, I sympathize with the history of the suffering of the Jewish people. They've been subjected to Holocaust in Germany, not in Palestine. They've been subjected to pogroms in Russia. They were subjected to anti-Semitism in Europe, not in the Arab world and not in Palestine. We lived together, we coexisted with each other, and we respected each other. Till the Zionist movement came out, and now what we'll see is that all those who were guilty in oppressing Jewish people are trying to transfer their guilt to the Palestinian people. In this case, we are now the victim. And this should stop. That's why I say, for the sake of Palestinians and Israelis, we need immediate ceasefire. And we need immediate exchange of prisoners. And we need immediate real peace process that leads to the end of this occupation and creating a real situation for just and lasting peace. Continuation of the war 
will only open more wounds and will push more people towards violence instead of creating a condition for real peace. Well, let's hope better sense prevails and the war ends uh, soon because we cannot have bloodshed happening on a daily basis as is happening right now. Uh, and we cannot have families and lives being destroyed like this. We hope that the war ends soon. But uh, with that, I'm going to thank you, Mr. Mustafa, for joining us on Mirror now and sharing your perspective on this war. Thank you very much. All right, with that, it's a wrap on Beyond the Headline tonight. But news and updates, of course, will continue on Mirror Now. You stay tuned. Bye-bye.